Hello and welcome back. Right, today we're back in the small case and there's a reason for this. So as you've probably seen from my previous um, videos, we've been messing around with the Persimilus. So what I wanted to do is just restrict everything down and just have one voice, one kick. There's no external processing going off in Ableton today. Uh, as you can see, I've got hold of a muscle. Don't ask where I got it from. It was really hard to find, especially with um, what's going on rest recently with um, WMD. Rest in peace. Um, but yeah, got sidechain compression now in the case. So I just wanted to keep everything in the case because I know there's been a few videos that I've done where I've been in this case and not everything's been in here. So we've got the clock, we've got modulation, we've got our main voice, we've got a kick, we've got a sidechain and we've got a sequencer. So what this has led to is something a little bit different to what I'd normally do. So that's the beauty of modular. That's why I love modular. You just end up trying to do something and something totally different comes out of it. And then you think that's the thing. That's the thing I want to record. So let's get started. We'll go through it and then I'll break down the patch as usual and then probably play it out. Like I said, it's a little bit different. Don't expect the expected today. OK, let's get going. Thank you. 
Okay, that's been really fun to play. Um, there was something in there that I kind of lost, so I'll start off explaining what went wrong first, and then I'll go through the patch. Okay, so the main hook here is what we started on, which is um, coming from the mimetic. So what we've got going on here, which I don't normally do, is I have pitch coming straight from mimetic into the basimilis via this attenuator. So I just kind of set that level right, came up with something, just load tread, load tread, till something good came out. Now, that was fine, but then when I came to the variation, which was on track two, I had something really, really good. I started recording this video, and what you don't want to do is have fat fingers. So, the problem with mimetic is that undo does not undo when you save points. I've just discovered this. If I'm wrong, someone tell me, or noise engineering tell me, but please don't do what I just did. So, if you want to load, you load there. And I wanted to load point two and I was on one and I accidentally clicked save on two, which saved save slot one directly into save slot two. And I could not get it back. I tried to undo it, tried to do all sorts. So just be careful if you're using this, don't accidentally just make sure your fingers only on the load. OK, so let's break this down, see what happens. Right. So got a simple kick here. I picked my simplest, smallest kick, which is the kick all could probably do with something smaller. Um, because I could have probably fit uh, maybe something like a fracture in or something like this or something else. So what I've ended up having to do is because I've only got the kick and I'm side chained against the kick, I need to use the basimilis for everything else. So how have we done that? So what I've got is I've got the attack extremely low here. And then if we look at the attack here, this is coming out onto channel three. And what I was doing is I was playing this attack. So the attack is up quite high here, so you don't get too many hits. And as I was bringing this down, it was entering, giving us a lot of noise in with our baseline. So we're in the standard skin mode here, which is the baseline mode. Uh, so let's uh, just start that off. I'll just play that. I'll turn off the kick. In fact, now I'll leave the kick on because I haven't yet figured out how to level with the side chain. So we're quite low down here on levels. As soon as I turn off the kick, a levels increase. I'll try and keep it the same. So let's just start this up. So if we bring this down, this will actually bring the attack in. So you can hear that's a lot, a lot more noisy now. I was just kind of playing that attack, and I was playing it off the filter here to get very filtered noise. But then you don't really get the attack until you're up here. And then I was just taking some of that out. So we got a little bit of um, kind of hats coming out of the um, similars here. Okay, what else is going on? So our main output A is going into the trigger of the similars. And I started off here with a standard seven note rhythm. Now the reason I did that was for what I came to later, which was to turn off step three. Now the reason I turned off step three here is if we go into this infinity symbol on the steppy, it allows you to play the steppy instead of actually adding um, triggers here, it will play what you're currently playing. So if I play step three here, I'll get nothing because the kick is also coming out on channel uh, B here, which the kick is on four on the floor. So it's just here, 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 here. So there's the kick. So if I play anything on the kick, it will give us like a kick fill. If I play anywhere else, I'll get nothing. So if we go back to channel A here and we play C, we'll get nothing. So it's kind of using that to add a rest in. So if I play this step, and I was also, you can also do a range here, so we can do that. That'll give us a, re a rest every four, four steps. 
And if I were to play step one, you'd get a lot of kicks. Which with the side chain that I've got on is probably a bit pointless. So I was just using that for a bit of rest, which is, it just breaks things up a little bit. So that's kind of nice. Okay, what else is going on? So that's all I was doing with Steppy. I generally do use Steppy in this mode, where you can play between two points. So if you want to play between one and four here. Let's just change the rhythm a little bit there. Play between one and four. So just add maybe one, play two steps here. So that's got rid of the kick. So Steppy's great for that. This mode here is great, this um, infinity sign. Love it. Okay, so that's what we were doing with Steppy. Uh, we've gone through the attack. Didn't really play, um, didn't really play um, four here, but if we look at four where this is going, this is going into the morph, so we can take the morph off. We not can play that. I thought about it, but Maybe I'll do that a bit later. I'm not going to touch the pitch because I want to keep the pitch exactly as it is. And I've not got anything going on here on channel 2, so we'll just leave that where it is. Okay, what else have we got going on? You can see here that we have an LFO from, from the Oct. Reasonably slow moving LFO. It's coming through channel A here on the attenuator and we're sending it through to modulate our filter. So let's see what that does. So if we, if we increase this here to go to the full um, LFO. Now the reason I don't have that is because I was playing the filter and as soon as we were around about here, kind of takes it way down here. And you can't hear it, I mean, it gives you a little bit of a rest, which is nice, but... And the thing with an LFO is it doesn't matter whether you positively or negatively attenuate this FM here, because the LFO is positively and negatively doing it anyway, so there's no point messing with this. This will just give us a little bit of attenuation if we move between here and here. But I like the overall control of, instead of having such a big LFO here, we can just create a nice little LFO. Just fade that filter in a little bit. Okay, so then everything else is coming from the mimetic pretty much. Um, before I do that, I'll just explain what we've got going on here with the malt. So we've got our main clock coming on channel two here, which is coming through on the pink cable sending us here, so we've got a clock going into our steppy. We've got the clock going back round into the mimetic. The reset here is on channel one, so if I stop, you see that hits, and then it'll reset this and it'll reset this, and the reset is coming out onto this part of the malt of the um, of the case, and then we're doing the reset here on the steppy, and we're sending the reset right round here and into the mimetic. So that's all we've got, reset and clock here, reset and clock here. There's another malt here if you've spotted it. I've got a 2 HP, it's my only 2 HP module. Probably do with a few more of them. Um, they're not great for this case, just be careful if you're thinking about getting these because they're very small and you can cram a lot into here. Two negative things with this. One is that if you put a lot of 2 HP modules in here, you're gonna run out of input. So please do check how many inputs you get inside the case here because I'm almost maxed out here. I can't remember off the top of my head, but do count if you're trying to put lots and lots of these small modules in. And the other thing is that because they're 2 HP, they tend to be quite deep. So I can see here that this is going quite deep. I mean, there's enough room there, but if you've got a lot of cables and a lot of mess going on, just be careful on your skiff if you're getting these, just make sure that they, um, that they do fit, but they are great. So this malt, what this is doing is, this malt's actually upside down. So I, the reason I've done it upside down is because I'm trying to side chain the kick. So channel B here, the output is going into the malt, and the output is going into the trigger of the kick, and then the output of the kick is going up here into my mixer. I am then also sending that into the side chain of the muscle here. And then the main baseline is Basimilus, which is going out into the carbon filter, low pass filter, and that's going out into, into the um, uh, 
compressor and then the compressor is going out so the bass line is coming out here and the kick is coming out here so we get this nice compression and I'm not sure if you can see it I take no I can't take the kick off but you can see that that's basically uh, ducking there's no it's not increasing it's just ducking the volume of the bass line there okay what else have we got going on um, we've done the clocks, we've done the basics of the alt, we've got a little bit of attenuation, we've done all this, so... Okay, so lastly, all we've got to discuss is the mimetic. So like I said here, the main hook is on channel... Um, I call it channel 1, there's four channels here. I'm using channels 1, 3 and 4. 1, 3 and 4 going through the lapsus attenuator. And the main save point is on position 1 here. And then what I do is I just do load tread, load tread until I find something that I like. And then save that on position 2. So if we load position 2. And then what I was doing here, just because this isn't quite how I wanted um, position 2. Playing with the filter here, increase the resonance. Just make that a little bit more interesting. And then once you finish playing with that, I always end up going back to the same point and then loading position one. Now, just load shredding everything can sometimes be a little bit too much. So what I tend to do is I found this nice position, this nice point, and I've got the melody just how I want it. But mainly these two one two here that I'm also using. I don't want to change those. I might just want to change the melody. So this position one, I want to keep the same noise rhythm and I want to keep the same morph here. So in order to find something that matches this and just have a different melody, what I'll do is don't load shred these. So we'll just change the melody on track one and then load shred. So it's keeping the same underlying rhythm and then if I like that one, just reactivate them and then save them into a new save slot. I mean, that one's quite good, so let's save that here. Return back to the bass. The other thing that I had was I had a bit more of a breakdown here, and I had this on um, position three and position four. Now position four, I found this kind of bass level that I liked 16 steps and they're all pretty much the same so again what I did was I deselected these found a different melody or just twist this knob a little bit just to get a little bit of a change in the pitch and then resave it and what I did was I saved it here so just listen to the slight melody difference get a slight pitch difference on this one compared to this one no pitch See how that just gave us a little bit? And then reset back to bass. And then back to home. So that's how I like to use the mimetic. Load shred, find something you like have the melody on one of the channels, deselect the others, do a load shred, find something you like, reselect them all, save that in your new save slot. That one's not great, let's reset. And then after this breakdown that we had here, had another one here on um, position five. This one worked quite well by increasing the resonance. Go back to check our rest. And back home. See how that rest just adds a little bit? It's almost like lowering the filter. So yeah, that's it. Just wanted to show 
how good these small cases are and just how restricted they, they make things for you. I mean, a bit of history, I started off with a small case like this, as I guess a lot of people will, because it's an expensive hobby. It's expensive enough to buy this case, let alone fill it with modules. Then you've got to remember to fill it with the right modules. So if anyone's interested, um, you know, putting the putting together a small case is very, very difficult. Um, so this is, you know, this is a, you get a bass line, you've got a filter with your bass line, you've got a kick drum, you're kind of improvising by using um, this to give us a little bit of hats. You could get two HP hats in here as well. The compressor is great because you've got sidechain compression. Um, you've got a great clock source here. Not only that, I mean, I'm only using this as a clock, but you've got great modulation points here as well if you want them. I just love the playability of these two modules. This is more design it yourself. I mean, you can use it as a quantizer if you want, all sorts of things. But the playability of these two together, I absolutely love. And that's why I go into modular to find the happy accidents and just come up with things like this. I mean, this kind of, this kind of note sequence, I would never come up with myself, but it just kind of works. So yeah, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a bit batshit crazy. It's a bit different from normal. Um, but I love demoing things like this because it just shows how you come up with things that you wouldn't normally come up with. And you just get that, that yes moment where you think, yeah, I can do something with this. I really like it. So at that point, I hit record and um, get the camera on. Okay, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to play this out. Again, if you liked it, please click like. Um, I'm not into the graphics yet, just a thumb will do. Um, if you did like it, please click it. Um, I've decided that if I get to um, if I get to a thousand subscribers, then I'll learn how to do some video editing and maybe make these things a bit more professional, maybe get a better camera. Um, we'll see. If it kicks off, it does. If it doesn't, I'm happy to just enjoy it as it is because I like making these things. So yeah, I'm just going to play this out for a bit and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.